Hi guys, this is Cece Carter, your Realtor for Life, with Keller Williams First Coast Realty in Jacksonville and Keller Williams Cityside in Atlanta. And I want to talk to you just briefly about the home buying process in a nutshell. All right, so there are a few steps that you have to sort of go through and if we don't go through them in the right sequence we set ourselves up for disappointment and frustration all right so first of all you want to engage an experienced agent well so once you engage me as your agent you want to make sure that you find out what your budget is now the best way to do that is to talk to a lender that you trust or a lender that comes recommended by someone that you trust who can look at your credit and your savings and your income and your expenses and help you determine what the best purchase price would be for you. And you might also opt to get some sort of down payment assistance like Florida assistance or Florida bond uh, to cover your closing costs, especially in this market. In this market, buyers understand that they have to offer above asking price and they can't really ask for closing costs. So if you don't have enough money saved for your down payment and your closing costs, uh, you'll really need to explore some assistance programs so that, for example, if you have your down payment but you don't have enough for closing costs, there are programs out there offered by individual banks as well as by things like Florida Bond that will give you the money. For example, Florida Bond just increased the amount of money that they give for down payment and closing cost assistance from $7,500 to $10,000. $10,000 is nothing to sneeze at. It's certainly enough to cover all of your closing costs or all of your down payment. Or if the home price is smaller, you might even cover most of the down payment and the closing costs. And you only have to come with a little bit of your own money, okay? so. That's something that your lender can help you sort out. Like Bank of America right now, if you're within their income limits, they will cover all of your 3% conventional down payment up to $10,000 and they'll cover up to $7,500 for your closing costs. And I've had several buyers who've taken advantage of that program. Vistar, uh, under certain circumstances and within certain requirements, they will cover up to $5,000 toward your closing costs. Synovus Bank has a 100% financing program with no closing costs, as does Navy Federal. Uh, so there are a lot of options out there for you, uh, but I try to keep on top of those things because I know that assistance, you know, is something that a lot of buyers are interested in. Just even if you have savings, you want to be able to use your savings for other things like, I don't know, furniture, things of that nature. After you're pre-approved, you know what your budget is. Now it's time to go look. So once we start looking for a house, we've been pre-approved, we start looking for a house. We want to make sure that we're uh, understanding what our must-haves are, our must-haves and our like-to-haves. Our must-haves are things like, look, I have to have at least three bedrooms. That's a must. I must have at least two bathrooms. That's a must. I must have a two-car garage. That's a must. But maybe you'll discover that, okay, the must-have wood floors throughout the house, maybe that's a like-to-have. Maybe that's something I can change later. So you'll need to determine what your must-haves are and what your like-to-haves are. Um, because you know what? Sometimes our money is going to dictate uh, which things we need to live without and which things we can absolutely have in our house. So that's a thing. So once you know what your home price is and you settle on a house that you absolutely love, you make an offer on that house. And I can tell you that right now, in this market of lots and lots of buyers, but not, not enough homes available for all of the buyers, 
you're going to have to compete for that house. And in order to be competitive, if the house is listed at 275, you cannot offer 275. You might have to offer 285, 290. So if your budget is $275,000, you probably should be looking at homes that are around $250,000, $260,000 so that you can make a higher offer, a higher than list offer, because otherwise you're not going to be able to compete. I've listed homes that have had 20 offers, uh, all of them above list price, so, some of them 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars above list price. So in order to compete with those other buyers, you're going to have to come come with a very strong offer. Uh, many buyers are noticing that, okay, I have to offer not only higher than list price, but I also have to forego repairs. Like I'll get a home inspection, but unless there's something earth shattering on there, I'm not gonna ask the seller for repairs. That's in order to be competitive, right? Uh, something else that you might consider doing if you have enough money saved is, look, if the house appraises at less than the purchase price, I'm willing to come to the closing table with additional money to cure that deficit. Now that's typically, that's not something in the past that I have uh, told buyers that they need to do, but in this market, that's something that you may consider doing if you want the house badly enough, just because you're competing with 19 other people. And my experience has been, you know, with these last couple of listings that I've had, one had 20 offers in two days. Another one had 14 offers in three days. There's a lot of competition out there. So if you're a buyer, you got to be prepared to enter this market. And so we have to set some realistic goals there. Once you've made an offer on a house, if that offer is accepted by the seller, now you're under contract and you've got some dates that you've got to stick to. That's something that I help with. I actually have a transaction coordinator who also helps with that to make sure that you're hitting all of the deadline dates. If the home appraises uh, and if the inspection doesn't reveal any major items, then you're on the path towards your closing, okay? And that's a good thing. Uh, during that period that you're under contract, you don't wanna have your credit pulled for any reason. Do not have your credit pulled. Even if you're like, well, they said it's, no payments, no interest for 18 months. It still goes on your credit report. I know of a case where uh, someone was under contract on a house with a big backyard. And so he decided he was going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to buy me a riding lawnmower so I could go out here and mow this big old lawn. Well, you know what? He bought the riding lawnmower on credit and it showed up on his credit report and he couldn't close on his house. And he's still in his apartment. Can't use the riding lawnmower. Burp, burp, burp. So don't do that. Don't go out and spend any money. Uh, don't uh, take out any new lines of credit. Don't change jobs. Uh, don't put large, large amounts of cash in your account. You would think that's not an issue, but like, I don't know. It's like people, I don't know if they're hiding money under their mattresses and they're like, oh, let me put this in the bank. Look, if you all of a sudden deposit $8,000 into your checking account and nobody knows where it came from, that's going to send up red flags with the bank. So don't do that. <laughs> Okay, when you're under contract, keep your crap clean so that nothing will keep you from closing on that house. If your car is a jalopy that's just about to break down any second, you, I don't know, fix it with some duct tape and spit, get it working again, but do not buy another car until after you close on your house. It's very important.
three days before you're closing, or at least three days before you're closing, you're going to get something called a closing disclosure. And that's going to tell you all of the numbers, uh, all of the credits that are being credited to you, and the bottom line figure that you're going to bring to your closing. You're going to come to the closing table with that check in hand and your driver's license. And you'll sign like a stack of papers. Uh, basically a hundred pages that say if you pay you stay if you don't you won't a thousand different ways to say if you don't pay us we'll take your house that sort of thing little things like that but once you finish signing that ream of paper you will get keys to your house we will take pictures and you will be a home owner this is CC Carter your realtor for life make it a great day